parts of this video are sponsored by AliExpress. Okay, so here's the honest question. How many cards do you actually need as a creator? In 2025, we've seen a lot of fake cards, as people like to call it, you know, efficiency cards, low power efficiency cards. The eight core standards that we were so used to up to Intel 11 900K is actually ended, but there are still some CPUs that are eight cores and less. For example, this one over here, the Ryzen 9700X. Now, AM5 socket is pretty amazing in terms of upgrades, but is that eight cores actually enough? Because that is what AMD calls the mid-range CPU. And here's the thing, if you watch till the end of the video, you'll realize that there are not a lot of people that should actually buy the 9700X. Let me explain why. So if you're new here, welcome to Tech Notice. This is the creator focused PC and tech channel. If you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and make sure that the bell icon is on so you won't miss any of the future videos. Now, you might have seen some gaming actual benchmarks online. We're gonna do things slightly differently in this video. And I wanna start with my test bench setup because that's where I'm probably gonna step on some people's toes. So we've got AMD Ryzen 9000 series CPUs and we're gonna test it on the Asus X870E Pro at Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. We've got 64 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 5,600 megatransfers per second. We've got RTX 4090, which is the same across the board. Then we've got a 360 millimeter AIO. We've got one operating system SSD and then one project drive SSD. And we're using the Samsung 980 Pro for the project SSD. And then on the Intel Core Ultra platform, I am using the Gigabyte Z890 Aero D motherboard, 48 gigabytes of RAM running at 8,000 megahertz, 360 millimeter AIO, and then the same SSD setup, one for the OS, and then we've got Samsung 980 Pro, two terabyte SSD for the project drive. Now, if you know about CPU parts, you're probably already mad. And please feel free to leave the comments, it's very good for the algorithm. You can see that the RAM speed is not equal here. I am using 5600 megatransfers per second for the AMD Ryzen and 8000 for Intel. How is this fair? Well, actually, that is the bog standard spec that they come out from the factory. If you're familiar on the channel, I always test the CPUs with their standard memory speeds. Not the overclocked speed, but the standard speed. Why is that important? As a creator, you can try to overclock your RAM and then go as fast as you can, but this particular spec will show you which CPU is better at running higher RAM speeds, higher capacities. And in this case, Intel Core Ultra Series have a better IMC, Integrated Memory Controller. And with the Intel Boost profile, you can actually run it at 8,000 megahertz. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. Do you know what's funny? Both Intel and AMD, when they send out these CPUs for reviewers, they actually suggest the reviewers to use faster RAM that is actually officially supported by their own CPU. What are you gonna do with that then? So, if you're interested in picking up the AMD Ryzen 9700X I used in this video, or the crucial P510 1TB SSD that AliExpress also very kindly sent out, there are some special codes for the Tech Notice audience in the description below and on the screen now. Join the team and get 10% cash back and start earning when you complete daily tasks like signing in, browsing, placing orders. The higher the team points, the higher the discounts. So make sure you use my link in the video description below. Now then, let's take a look at some of the specifications then of certain CPUs. So I've got the 265K, which is the Core Ultra 7, Ryzen 9 9950X, which is basically two of these 9700X glued together because instead of eight, it's 16 cores. So let's see if doubling the cores will actually give you double the performance. And then we've got the 9800X 3D, which is also eight core CPU and labeled as one of the best, if not the best gaming CPU in the world. But is eight cores enough? Because that one is also running eight cores. So the 9700X is going up to 5.5 gigahertz boosts frequency, which is exactly the same as on the Core Ultra 7 265K. The base frequency is slightly slower by 100 megahertz at 3.8 gigahertz compared to 3.9 on the 265K. And obviously the other Ryzen's are a lot higher. Intel CPU here has the efficiency or as some people like to call fake cores as well. I don't think fake cores is actually completely accurate. 
it's more clever calls and watch AMD will start to do the same thing. Interestingly here, Intel is using a three nanometer TSMC node N3B compared to four nanometer that AMD is using. So for the first time ever, Intel is actually using their competitors, you know, chips and they are actually lower nanometers, which is better compared to AMD because the lower the nanometer, the more transistors you can basically cram into the CPU, the more powerful it is, the more efficient it is, la da da la da da. But then let's take a look at some of the benchmarks then. We're gonna take the 9700X as our baseline for the benchmarks and compare the other CPUs against it. The 9800X 3D is basically the same in single core scores, about 2.3% you know, slower, but about 16.6% faster in the multi-core scores. The 9950X is pretty much double, 97% faster in the multi-core scores. So as you can see, having doubled the cores, AMD has got very linear graph here in terms of upgrades. And the single core score is basically the same, about 2.2% faster than the 9700X. The Core Ultra 7 here is about 6% faster in the single core scores, which looks to be the fastest in Cinebench R24, and 86.8% .8 faster in the multi-core scores, very close to the 9950X. Now, there is something even more shocking that I'm gonna reveal to you in a minute, so please keep watching because you wanna see the whole picture before you make the judgment, okay? Geekbench 6, 9800X 3D is about 7% slower in the single core scores here and about 6% faster in the multi core scores. 9950X is about 2.6% faster in the single core scores and only 30.8% faster in the multi core scores. The Core Ultra 7 is now, interestingly, slightly slower in the single core scores, but about 37.8% faster in the multi core scores. Interestingly, a lot faster than even the 9950X. But moving on to some of the actual creator benchmarks, and I'm using Puget Bench for the Adobe applications here, as well as DaVinci Resolve. We've got the Photoshop application benchmark and the 9800X 3D is about 2.2% faster. 9950X only 3.7% faster than the 9700X and the 265K is about 10% slower. So in this benchmark here, we can see that the 9700X seems to be doing very, very well. But this is uh, roughly about where the good news end. Looking at Lightroom Classic, another photo editing application, you can see that 9800X 3D is 42% faster, which is a huge, huge difference compared to the 9700X. 9950X, about 40% again faster, and the 265K, 71.6% faster. The 9700X is just absolutely left in the dust compared to these other CPUs. Moving on to video editing and Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. If you're wondering why am I using a bit older version of Premiere Pro, it's because the newer version of Premiere Pro doesn't allow hardware acceleration on H.265 codecs, probably because of some of the licensing weirdness. So in order to keep it the same and give each CPU and some of the GPUs the best benefit to perform well in Premiere Pro to actually show you that the long GOP score, you know, it works well with H.265 as well. I'm using a little bit of an older version. 9800X 3D is about 10 to 11% faster in Premiere Pro. Here we can see that interestingly, the 3DV cache does make a difference even in video editing, especially intraframe. Look at that 52% faster on the 9800X 3D. 9950X, about 20% faster in the overall scores, so not so linear here, but 70% faster in the intraframe scores there, 40% in long GOP, still absolute bloodbath. But here's where the interesting thing comes in. The 265K is faster than any of these here, 30 1% faster in the extended overall scores and 36% faster in the standard overall scores, 54% faster in the long GOP, 79% faster in the intraframe. That is absolutely insane. In fact, even the GPU effects, even though we're using the same GPU on all of these benchmarks for all of the platforms, it's about 20.8% faster, meaning that the CPU, the way it feeds stuff to the GPU, I don't know, just makes the GPU faster, even if your CPU is faster. 
Let's take a look at After Effects here. And here we have the 9700X, 9950X, and 265K. 9950X is 21.5% faster in the standard overall scores and 13.1% faster in the extended overall scores. Quite a bit faster, not quite double the speed, but it is good. 265K is even faster than the 9950X, which is fascinating. 26.8% faster compared to the 9700X and 15.1% faster in the extended overall scores. That's very, very impressive. Why? You'll find out in a minute. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and here we can see that the 9800X 3D doesn't really give any extra performance apart from intraframe standard scores where we can see it roughly about 10.8% faster compared to the 9700X because both of them are 8-core CPUs. But then doubling the cores, we're getting extra 11.9, roughly 12%, overall score increase, 25% interframe and 42% raw score increase. As you can see, the difference here is not as big as in Premiere Pro because DaVinci Resolve likes to utilize the GPU and because the GPU is the same across the board, the difference isn't as big here. But regardless, the 265K here is the fastest in the bunch in not all of the benchmarks, but about 10% faster in the overall scores, especially extended overall score, the fastest in the bunch here. Interestingly, the long GOP here is slower on the Intel one, even though Intel usually with their QuickSync and iGPU overperforms the competition. But for some reason, I'm still encountering some of the issues with Intel drivers or Intel performance with the long GOP. Perhaps the applications or software can actually take advantage of all of the features in the CPUs, or doesn't know exactly how to change between the GPU, the 1490, and the iGPU, when is best to use which codec, because there is actually a difference. 40% faster in the interframe scores compared to 9700X, 35% in raw scores, that's pretty impressive on the Core Ultra 265K. But what about 3D performance if you're rendering on the CPU? Blender, here we can see that the 3D variant of that CPU is about 10 to 17% faster, which is okay, but there is a but. We'll get to that in a minute. 9950X is literally more than double the performance. As you can see, CPU rendering, AMD is doing wonders here. Having eight cores and 16 cores, you literally get more than double the performance, which is absolutely Fascinating. The 265K here now can't beat the 9950X, but it's still roughly about double the performance in Monster Scene, 63% faster in the Junk Shop Scene, and 67% faster in the Classroom Scenes. Moving on to V-Ray, another different 3D rendering application. We can see 9800X 3D is 20% faster, which is faster than in Blender. 9950X is more than double the performance, again, 112% faster. And the Core Ultra 7 265K is 66% faster. Now, there's a lot of buts and asterisks across these benchmarks, and you're wondering, what should we take from this? There is one more thing that I would like to add, which is the power draw. The 9700X is actually very, very power efficient. It's pulling 88 watts when fully utilized in Cinebench R23, which means that you can cool it with a potato. And that seems to be quite impressive, especially if you're looking at efficiency per load power draw, should I say, because idle is a little bit different. I'm gonna have to make a whole different video about that. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button. We're working on that. The 9800X 3D is pulling almost double the performance at 150 watts. So as you can see, that's why perhaps sometimes it's performing better. And then the 9950X is pulling more than double, 200 watts power draw. And then the Core Ultra 7 265K is pulling 210 watts. As you can see, we are pulling more watts as we go higher, and the 9700X can pull more power if we enable PBO in BIOS and just make it pull more power. And now to the butt, and this is where we get to the cold truth. Here's the thing, the 9700X right now, when I'm making this video, is over $300 for the CPU. Eight cores, over $300. If you can get it on a deal, you will be able to get it just for $300 or just less. The 265K, if the holiday deal still lasts, you can get between 260, maybe even less. Maybe there's something bundled, but it is a lot less than 
$300. I'm seeing 10 to 20% lower price point compared to the 9700X. And then we've got the 9950X, which goes for $600. And then the 9800X 3D, which is again, very, very expensive on a whole other level. What is the conclusion here? If you've paid close attention, you can see that the eight cores that we get charged $300 for are not particularly impressive in the creative applications. Yes, there is good upgrade path on the AM5 to go to the 9900X and then 9950X, 9950X 3D, perhaps if you want that. But if you saw a trend across the benchmarks, you could have seen that the Core Ultra 7 265K often outperformed the 9950X that is more than double the price. Which brings us to a very interesting conclusion that AMD is so dominant but actually has forgotten to check price to performance ratio. And everyone hated the 265K because, you know, AMD was just better and this was pulling more power and so on. In terms of performance for your money, the 265K, it's hard to recommend in 2026. I don't see a reason why you would go with the 9700X because you just get so much better value for your money with the Intel platform especially if we start looking at the RAM prices, you're probably gonna to have to save some of the money on the Intel platform. But when you start to go with the Intel platform, you realize that it's not just the CPU that's cheaper, it's also the motherboards that are cheaper. And usually you get better specs with the motherboard. And it used to be that the PCI lanes are less on Intel platform, but not anymore. Intel matched that. So as you can see, AMD on the lower end, on mid-range, especially at the $300 mark, is not impressive. and Eight cores, perhaps, is not just enough anymore to beat the competition. Now, I can already see someone also saying that, yes, but the Intel is so hot, it's pulling so much more power. And this is where most people are actually mistaken. In fact, some of the big YouTubers as well, because we're always measuring the full utilization power draw. Something like Blender, when we're rendering out work, and then we see how much power did we use, how many points did we get, and then we get performance to what ratio. But I would argue, how often do you actually render with your CPU? And how often do you just actively work on something? Which is a test that we're gonna have to find out. And if you like to see that, hit that subscribe button because Intel is a lot better at the idle speeds, idling at much lower wattages so that the average will reach out. So if you're just wondering, which one will you know, cost more for your electricity bills, which one is more expensive to run, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna have to find out. Thanks very much guys for watching. If you wanna pick up any of these or check out my test bench setup, I'm gonna leave the links in the video description below where you can also find some other interesting links and stuff. Okay, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.